Hey, hi everybody. I'm here. Hello. <laughs> I'm Nikki. I'm from Gracie's house over here in the UK and um, I'm a brand ambassador for Redesign with Prima. So Facebook page here. Hi there. Redesign with Prima Facebook page. I can see some people have come on and Instagram on the Redesign with Prima profile. Hi, 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 hi. So we're going to work with um, Definitely we're going to be working with Vigorous Violet today. So it's not a new product today, but it is lovely. Um, this is one of the bigger ones. So this is Vigorous Violet. So you might have seen this around for a while. Hi, Patricia. Hi, hi, hi. I can't, my because my camera's pointing down, I'll do my best to catch comments, but I can't see everything. This is one of the bigger transferred. So it comes in six sheets. So I haven't used all of it. There's plenty for another project. I've used maybe... I don't know, one and a half, um, may, yeah, maybe like, mm, I don't know. So there's three sheets down I've used, which bit have I used? I've used these top two and about half, maybe, maybe a third of the middle sheet. So there's still plenty. Okay, so that's where we're going to start. I have pre-cut it, Roz. I know you love it when I pre-cut things. <laughs> um, so... I'm working on a blanket box at the moment. This is the lid for the blanket box. So I really want this pop of detail when you open the blanket box and then I'm gonna put something different on the other side. So I have cut my pieces. I've got my, my polishing pad for later. Um, this is the transfer tool that comes in every tube. And this is the one that you can buy separately, which is amazing as well. But I will probably for this project end up using the, the wooden stick more um over on instagram i've got can they be used over glass you can put them obviously because the print is on the top they they can go on the um the outside surface of glass if you put them underneath something that's glass then you'll just get the back of the transfer so it depends what um application you want so for example <clears throat> if you wanted it on a coffee table you'd you'd have to try and seal it with something and because on glass they don't really need sealing it's, it's a bit of a tricky one. If you're putting it on a mirror that just needs polishing, kind of cleaning with a soft cloth, then you're absolutely fine. But because you don't need to seal on glass, because you don't want the glass to go cloudy, you have to kind of rethink um, how you would apply it. So for example, if you had a glass top on a coffee table, you'd maybe want to create an, a piece that can go under it that you can apply your transfer and then the glass will be the protection for your transfer. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to start with the bigger pieces. Um, I haven't used the whole width of the second section. So I have cut some pieces from off of here because I wanted it fi to finish nicely on the edge of my lid um, and be able to kind of create, you know, like a, a framed piece rather than it not, not fitting to one end and fitting right up to the edge on the other end. So that's why I've trimmed it in that, in that way. And if you can see, I got that there. You can just see where I've cut right the way to the edge of these flower petals. So there would have been some more greenery coming up here and that's just so that it will fit on that edge. So I'm going to move those pieces out of the way. How's everybody doing? What you've been up to since last week? So we're going to go about there. So I've got an equal amount on roughly, we're eyeballing, on either end. And we're going to go for the bigger piece first. If I actually leave that there, then I can leave. I can line this piece up. So this is my back edge. This is where the hinges are. So this is where um, this is the, the bottom. So you just need to make sure that you've got what you're applying to. If it's not obvious, if it's not a chest of drawers or something, you want to make sure you've got that the right way up. It's been done before. I've done it before and put something on upside down. It's easy to do. <clears throat> Actually, I think Chelsea did something like that the other week, didn't she? <laughs> Let me just move you up a bit on. Whoops. What was that? Scissors. On Facebook. There we go. So I'm just going to be rubbing all the way across kind of give it a good rub to begin with you can smooth it down with your hand as well the warmth from your hand will actually start activating the glue so that's not a bad thing to do give it kind of a good 
overall rub over. The paint that I've got here, um, I'm also brand ambassador for Pink Chill. So I use Pink Chill. This is like, a, this is a custom mix actually. Um, so it's coal black with a little bit of, hmm, what was the color I used? British gray. Just so it's a really, really dark, dark charcoal color. And this, this project that I've done is kind of, I started off thinking I wasn't gonna have any transfers on and it's evolved, don't they all? <laughs> but I think it was gonna look, it's gonna kind of give this transfer um, a moody quality. I've done it before on a really pale, uh, kind of lavender toned gray when it first came out and it looks, it's a really, really pretty transfer. It looks fabulous on creams and whites. Um, but I wasn't sure if I'd actually seen it on dark. And when I was looking through thinking, can I, can I squeeze a transfer on this piece? And <clears throat> I stand in front of my transfer wall for inspiration at times. And it jumped out at me and I just thought, oh, how perfect. And of course, the other thing is, we do talk about the halo being more prominent on a dark surface. Yeah, fancy. I thought they would look really cute, the grey and the purples. Um, so yes, we talk about halos and we talk about how they're more visible on darker backgrounds. So you will really get to see that on here because apart from black, this is about as visible as you will ever see halos. <laughs> but... I can show you with the polishing pad how well we'll get rid of them. So as you can see, because it's a nice flat surface, we're not having to struggle too much. I'm not having to go around corners. I'm not having to do any cutting like last week. Ooh, that was that was long. It just some of them some projects just take longer. This is going to be a nice smooth. I say that. I shouldn't say that, something could go wrong. We all know that, that lives tempt fate <laughs> too much. But yeah, I really thought that this would look really nice. As I said, I'm gonna, we're gonna do the other side. So we are gonna do transfers on, on the outer part of the lid, but I wanted this to be a, a kind of dramatic, surprise when you open that that lid up so when I start lifting my top sheet <clears throat> can you see the halos they're big yeah um, when I start lifting like on this top edge you, you won't be able to see it because of the camera angle I can sometimes see where some of the transfer is kind of releasing but not 100% releasing and just, just drop that top sheet back down, give it another little rub. I'm really not putting much pressure on my stick at all. And there we go. It just, it just gives it a final help. And also sometimes you might lift and just see, oh, I've got a little, there might be a wrinkle or you might be able to see that some of it's not quite adhered. Drop it down, rather than rubbing it straight away with your hands, drop that top sheet back down and just give it another little kind of glide over with your stick. And then you can go to work with the polishing pad or whatever you burnish with. And make everything smooth. So we're nearly there on this first piece. See, I told you, smooth because it's a nice flat piece. Makes a change. I'm always making life, my life difficult. And of course, I've got to be really careful when it gets to the edge. So I'm really just gonna be very, very careful. I don't wanna scratch my paint with my transfer stick. You can, I often show you, you can use like a, you can actually fold that over, you see? Use another piece of top sheet and you can just put more pressure on it that way and not worry about damaging your paintwork. So that works quite nicely as well. And just that front edge. Now, I felt 
that went very smooth, so I feel like I'm doomed for the next piece. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to grab my polishing pad that I for some reason threw on the floor. Make sure it's nice and clean. And you can do a little bit of burnishing now. Can you see the halos? Let me just see if I can lift it to the camera so you can see it a little bit closer. You can see the halos, can't you? Yeah. They're quite, quite noticeable. So I'm going to work here because this is quite a good section. So I tend to use my burnish, my polishing pad. I kind of work my way. I'm going to go across the whole piece. I work my way from the centre and then over the edges. But if you can, kind of towards the outside of, of the adhesive halo. Does that make sense? So I'm pushing in the direction. I'm not kind of pulling it back away from the edge. And let me just show you that section there that I've just done. Can you see the difference? So can you see this bit I've done and this bit I haven't? Massive difference. And then when we top coat, of course, they'll go away even more. These pads are awesome. They're really, considering they're kind of like, um, you know, like a scrubby, um, you know, with a sponge on for washing your dishes. It's kind of that material. I don't know whether it's a bit softer, but it's that kind of thing. And, but they're so gentle and don't damage your transfer at all. I use them for just buffing my paintwork in between coats, just to knock any, if there's any, you know, if I've got any bits stuck in my paint, it happens as well, doesn't it? Um, and yeah, they're really good. They're very multi-purpose. So you can see a huge difference already. I'm gonna go over here. Obviously you're gonna, you know, when you've got lots of different edges, it's very difficult to keep rubbing in the right direction. So just go gently. But it's actually, the whole thing's gone on really nicely, so I'm not too worried about there being any lifting. I can't see or feel any bubbles at all. Happy days. So if you're, um, if you're not on Facebook already, if you're on Instagram, and those of you that are already on Facebook, there's a great file section in the Redesign with Prima group. Um, at, so at the top, you can kind of files, and there's a section for recommended and kind of approved top coats. So have a check in there, because um, it's, it's, there's a lot in there, and they're all top coats that have been used, tested, tried, um, and we know they work. So, you know, we're not, we don't, we don't recommend just one. Each of us may have our own preferred, but there isn't just one top coat that you can use. There's plenty. So I'm going to start with my next piece here. So just make sure that lines up quite nicely. If there is any, anything that kind of overhangs at the end, I can always just sand that back, but I've cut it hopefully that it will work quite well. I'm just going to move that over there so that everybody can see. Patricia, you want this one? Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? So I will definitely be getting my piece of top sheet that I discarded just now for this edge. I'm just going to line my pieces up. Oh, that sounds like a big helicopter coming over. So I'm just going to do my flowers edges there. I'm hope I don't think I'm wobbling the camera all over the place, am I today either? I tried to set it up so that it wasn't it wasn't on my floor, so that it didn't wobble. And then of course down that edge where I've cut them right up against each other, I want to be able to burnish that down quite well as well. So it comes in handy just having a piece of top sheet or like I did before, fold it back so that you can use it doubled over. 
Roz, I think you must be answering a question I haven't seen. <laughs> see that that front edge that, that you're facing so hi Jan just see it all depends on when I when I tip put my head up who I can see is coming on <laughs> top sheet off a bit quick then luckily it's not caused too much drama because it was just a twig so I haven't I haven't let my flower fold up on itself or anything that would be disastrous and annoying <laughs> now either but that's just good okay so that's looking good as well let's move it back over here we're going to slide it back I've actually got because it's painted on both sides I've got this sat on like a, a blanket or something underneath because I didn't want to get it scratched on a harder surface. I'm just trying to make sure that everyone can see. There we go. So let's get our, nether, our next bigger piece. So this has got the poppies and things on. So this is where I'm pretty too. About there we're going with that. So I'm gonna um, try and find my scissors. There they are. And just trim that that line and I do my very best to follow Rose's fantastic advice um, if you just cut a slither over the, under like under that line I don't even know if I've got enough there the way these are printed anyone that's familiar with any kind of printing you kind of get a print line where the printing stops and the inks will kind of pull at that last line and it's perfectly normal and on some sections you can see that line but if you cut just a sliver on both sides you you should lose it's where the ink just goes slightly dark I don't know if I'm going to be able to yeah maybe you can show you there so can you see there's a little a little little line and that's it so wherever you're cutting I don't know if you can see that <laughs> anyway that's the aim <laughs> that's what we're aiming for and I don't know if I've managed it or not but we'll have fingers crossed so I'm just going to stand up because I like to be able to stand up so I can line up from above if I'm working top down not done too bad actually. Mm. I think we've done okay. I probably could have trimmed a little bit more off actually. But it's okay. Ros has done a great video and I think she's done like a static how-to if you're struggling with that problem um, to show you how I've probably not quite cut off enough. So I'm going to use my extra top sheet just to do that edge. So I'm not rubbing where I've already worked. So along that edge and then I will do the same here because I don't want to scratch my paint. And then we 
can discard. Just go back to normal. So I'm going to go over and do a, a kind of rough, a rough rub over. We've got all these. These are actually weeds, aren't they? These ones. These look like purple dandelions. Wild flowers, not weeds. Wild flowers. dandelions would be lovely but I've never seen one okay and so we, I've done like that that brief kind of over everywhere and then as I start lifting my top sheet I'll just give that a little rub as we go along as well And obviously when you're working with bigger pieces and they've got all these little stems and flowers, you kind of need to concentrate on those whole, it's not just one piece, you have to concentrate, you just need to be mindful that if you're concentrating here and lifting the top sheet here, you could be lifting and, I just, you can't see that there, can you? There we go. You could be lifting and, um, and it might not be stuck down completely. So you kind of have to work along that whole section as you lift or, or kind of work it from different different angles as you go along. So like here, I've now got to do this section. So I'm gonna just lift this little bit of flower here and I'm gonna work kind of down this stem a little bit and then I'll, I'll carry on working across there. And we'll go over here as well. And then we can kind of go back to here and start meeting in the middle almost. How's everybody's weather? We had a, a, a lovely run of sunny days and it's been raining and miserable and grey today. Not so good. I said of the particularly the halo you'll notice on a dark surface that, that really look like they're not very well rubbed down again just pop that top sheet back and and rub again because we're always going to go back and burnish it afterwards anyway but there's no harm in just giving it an extra little an extra little rub to help that stick down So I'm going to move back over here now. There go. So I'm going to start at the top. And again, I just sort of work from all of the different angles now. So I'm not kind of pulling always in one direction. And we end up meeting somewhere in the middle most of the time. got all these long stems to take care of here as well. 
So again, like I was saying, you know, you've got you've got plenty of different areas that need your attention constantly. <laughs> any air bubbles or anything that needs my attention and then we'll go over with the polishing pad that feels really good so back to the polishing pad and you can just see the pesky little halo disappears before your very eyes <laughs> which is what we like to see and I even love the subtlety of these dark poppies they still show up quite nicely against the dark charcoal colour background. Um, like I said, it gives it a real kind of moody, moody feeling. finish that and go over that more at a later time and we've got one last piece on this underneath and then we'll flip over and we'll do the top side um, I'm just going to trim here like I did before like I said I think I probably could have trimmed more but I want to make sure it lines up with both pieces here so I'm not going to go too bonkers Always make sure you haven't got any kind of dust or debris on your piece, on your project, whatever that may be. Because um, what we don't want is the transfer sticking, sticking to the dust or anything that might be stuck. There we go. That's good. That is good. So again, I've got my piece of top sheet. I'm just going to do that edge. And we'll see. And then on the edge where I've cut right up to those leaves, we're going to rub against those bits as well. And the rest we can just use the normal piece of top sheet. Gone quiet. Sorry, I stopped talking. I was really concentrating then. <laughs> I don't know why I was concentrating more on this piece than the others. I just got really into it. <laughs> so, has anyone got plans for Easter? It's that time again. Or do you kind of just do you stick to the spring break? So I've seen I've seen some posts from some of my US friends and they've been doing spring break. But do you guys kind of have time off at Easter as well? Or well, that probably sounds like a stupid question, but I just hear spring break all the time. Not not so much 
um, yeah. I think Francie, I can literally just see some, I think you said California, did you see California? Yeah. I'll have to, I'm gonna to have to go back and check everybody's comments because I can hardly see anything. If anyone's watching on Gracie's house page, just to let you know, I'm not being rude. It's not that I, I'm not replying to you either. It's because I um, cross post onto Gracie's house. So I can't see those comments with you until I look at them later. Nice. Okie doke. So what do we think? Are you loving this one? I think that, can you imagine if you open your blanket box and that's what you see, or your, to oops, and or your toy box or whatever you decide, whoever decides to buy it. So I'm going to turn this over now. It's heavy. It's oak. <laughs> it's a big slab of oak. Well, I say that it was veneered. I was hoping to actually not have to paint it, but it wasn't in great condition, <laughs> but it's still heavy. Whatever, it's, whatever it is underneath the veneer. Right, so I'm gonna get the next piece that we're gonna be working with. So this one is called, I'll show you first, Summer in France, an oldie, but a goodie. So this is beautiful gold script. There's some flowers. This is uh, three sheets it's divided up into. So can you see the pattern there? So we've got some text. We've got scripts, we've got flowers. It's quite, um, I think it's like bakery stuff, cafe and bakery and things, but it's cute. So my thinking was that I'm gonna use the bit that says, ah, now I need to make sure I've got it up the right way. Don't I? Need to make sure that you can read what I'm doing, but it's up the right way for me. So if I, yeah, I need to turn this round. Sorry, folks. I'm glad I didn't make that mistake though. That would really have upset me <laughs> a lot. <laughs> okay. So this is what we're gonna put on the top because I thought what an amazing contrast against that charcoal color. How gorge will that look? Yeah, what do you think? I think so. So let's get this bad boy on. Oops. I dropped my stick. Oh, it's all the way over there. I'm going to be switching to the plastic tool now. So this is what we're going to do here. And this big old piece. Now I can see, because this, this is made, the grain goes that way on most of it, and then the, on the ends, it's got some grain that goes there. So I can actually line that up pretty well, I think, with that. Maybe this way a little bit more. That looks straight, that looks pretty good. Let's go for it. <laughs> okay. That's gonna look so cool. So we are just going to do the same again. And this gold is gonna really, really be quite dazzling, I think, against, my table's jiggling all over the place now, against the, um, the charcoal color. This one actually releases quite well, considering it's text. Um, I don't know whether it's, maybe because it's metallic, perhaps. So um, it really does release quite well, but it almost looks like it's not. So normally you can kind of see when, with the halo, like when things are releasing, you can't quite see it, but actually it releases dead quick. Can you see how easy that's coming off? But that does mean you have to be super careful when you're kind of getting in and out of the 
container and I'll show you a bit in a minute why. So again, you know, we've got, we're kind of lifting the sheet as we go along, but I'm having to concentrate on the whole row. I'm just lifting really, really gently and just seeing where it needs a little bit more attention and just dropping it down, dropping it back down again. section of this transfer on top of the flowers but I'm not sure if it needs it. It'd be quite cute to tie it together. Oh, I can't see any comments. I'll catch up with everybody after. that's going to look wow hi mary you're joining from vermont so dramatic so we've got basically it's just like full of moody drama this blanket box it's got some fab carvings on the front um i might have added some vigorous violet on the sides a little bit i couldn't possibly confirm uh, I did. Um, but I think this is just going to look really dramatic. And then, you know, you're going to have that extra moody drama when you open the lid as well. Love it. Love, love, love. Let's just make sure that's flat. So you see what I mean about how um, how quickly, how well this one releases. You have to be dead careful. Um, and there's the odd little kind of gold dot that you just need to, if well, I mean you can ignore them, or you just need to kind of give them a bit of attention. I've just realised you can't see what I'm doing now because I'm over this side. There we go. That helps, doesn't it? It's such a big, a big lid. I'm moving it over. Someone saying, what is this going to be for? So if this is a lid of a blanket box um, or toy box or storage trunk or <laughs> whatever you decide uh, or whatever, the, it's storage trunk. So I'm just gonna run my hand over and see if there's any bits that I need to be 
worried about that might lift up a tiny bit there and I'm going to be a bit more careful with my polishing pad on this one just because there's so many edges in fact it might be a bit boring for you to you kind of get the idea with the polishing pad from um from watching me with a vigorous violet, I don't think you need to see me do all of these letters, do you? No, that would be boring. So I'm going to flip it back over the other way and um, I'm going to see if we'll add this extra other piece of, of gold. OK, so there we've got that. So this little extra is also from that somewhere in France piece. So I don't even know what this says. Is it, I think this is a name. It's like L Lune and something. I don't know. So I was thinking to just add that there to tie across it. What do you think? I think that could look quite cute and tie in with what we've just done on the front. I think we're going to do that. Yeah. So I'm roughly, again, I'm eyeballing and I think we look about right there. Now, this is the piece that I said. So this I, I clearly didn't treat with much care. Can you see here where it's kind of cracked? It's not all of that is going to come off of the backing sheet. And I know there's another section around here that's done the same thing. So I don't think I've been very careful with this piece. There you go. Look, there's two extra pieces. But I also don't mind on this because I kind of... It's going over the flowers. I don't mind if it's a little bit broken. Um, let you just see. I think I think we're there or thereabouts. Maybe go there. Yeah, let's go there. I think that's level. Fingers crossed. Um, and you know, if you were really worried, you could possibly get a gold pen or some decor wax and fill in those gaps. I'm not, I'm not worried. I don't mind that that's kind of got a little bit of kind of a distressed sort of feel. I'm just being really careful on those layered sections, maybe paying a little bit more attention. Like I said, I don't think I've treated this scrap with a great deal of care. So it might need a little bit more attention as we go around. But this is why I keep scraps. Roz, Roz has got a big scraps bin as well, a section or a folder that she keeps them all in. So this was a, a scrap from a, a previous project where I didn't use this piece. Whereas the piece that I've just used on the top of the blanket box lid was a brand new one. And, and always pay attention to like these straight lines because if you lift them up they do have a tendency to not go down straight and flat and, get, get, and go wonky if you if you haven't got them stuck down very well. And that's annoying as well. <laughs> Just give that a little bit more. That bit doesn't want to stick. There we go. Another little bit that needs a bit more attention that doesn't want to cut there we go so you can see I'm not really putting masses of pressure on you just sometimes need to go over something a little bit more around 
this side of the table. just kind of glint in there you go as I tilt it you can just see that kind of starting to pick up the light okay cool so that's us done for today I hope you enjoyed today's project I hope it was nice to see um, I did see a lot of people saying um they haven't actually seen vigorous violet or they didn't maybe hadn't seen it so up close um, so I hope you enjoyed seeing a slightly older design from me this week um, and, well, Somewhere in France is even older than Vigorous Violet, so I think they make a lovely combination. I think they're really dramatic on this dark background. So thank you very much for joining me. Um, I'm not here next week. Um, I'm going away, so that'll be nice. Um, so I will see you in two weeks' time. There's a little bit there that didn't stick down properly. Okay, so if you do happen to be watching on replay, pop me a hashtag replay, that would be awesome. Um, Ros has been throwing some links up there if you do want to buy those products. Um, but have a fantastic Easter and I will, uh, am I going to see you before or after Easter? Oh, I think I'll see you just before. See you soon guys. Thanks. Bye.